A decade-long trend of insurers steadily increasing their private credit holdings continued in 2023, comprising 44% of the bonds held within the insurance industry. According to a new AM Best report, this compares with an approximately 27% level in 2013. The report also discusses the growing role and influence of private equity asset management firms. Here to discuss the report in more detail is Associate Director Jason Hopper. And Jason, the report cites lending gaps created by traditional lenders stepping back. What's filling that void? Sure. Thanks, John. Um, so yeah, some changes uh, to regulatory frameworks uh, regarding the typical uh, commercial bank um, lending area um, has left some gaps in, in lending for insurers. Um, and who stepped in has been kind of the asset manager private equity, other types of uh, private credit firms um, to be able to kind of fill that void. Um, and what's happened, uh, you've seen insurers kind of move more into the structured finance uh, type space, which is more the expertise of these private equity and asset managers. Uh, based on a, a poll um, of attendees at our annual review preview conference um, earlier this year, 50% of new money um, is being placed in private credit and another 20% of respondents uh, surveyed said uh, that they're allocating new money to structured credit. So we don't think this is a trend that's that's going to stop anytime soon. Jason, you mentioned private credit. What have we seen in the way of the growth of private credit over the last decade or so? It has been substantial over the last decade, John. Um, but what we've seen is the type of issuer has been shifting, right? 10 years ago, you see more of the uh, standard issuer type of credit. Now we're seeing um, from the private side, more uh, structured finance, non-mortgage backed asset backed securities. Uh, so what's mainly driving that has been the proliferation of CLOs, right? Um, some of which these asset managers and private equity firms do generate in-house um, and sell off as investments. At the same time, we've been seeing these asset managers, private equity firms, enter the insurance space in various ways, whether it be through partnerships, um, strategic plays, or, or sometimes even outright ownership. Um, so they're bringing this expertise in structured private credit uh, to insurers as well. And along with that, we're kind of seeing some companies um, with kind of that ownership structure of asset managers and private equity firms really ramping up their allocations to these sorts of private non-mortgage backed securities. So let's expand on non-mortgage backed securities a little bit more. We've seen a lot of growth in that in the last six years. What's driving that? Yeah, as I mentioned, I think CLOs is one of the main drivers. Um, this type of investment uh, requires lots of due diligence, um, lots of expertise, and there's obviously costs involved. Uh, so insurers have been utilizing private equity firms, asset managers, uh, because they're cost effective, right? Um, they bring the expertise and these sorts of companies uh, can gain access to asset classes that some insurers may not otherwise be able to get into. Uh, so with that, roughly 40% of life insurers do outsource more than 10% of invested assets. Um, so we're, we're basically seeing these various trends kind of converging um, all, all within the insurance industry. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, John. That was Associate Director Jason Hopper. You can find the full report online at ambest.com. For AMBest TV, I'm John Weber.